Hello and welcome back. This is Greg French. Uh, today on my robotics course, this will be lesson two of three lessons. Uh, we're going to do some assembly of the parts and start building out our robot. Uh, again, this is lesson two. We're building the obst obstacle avoidance robot. This time we're just going to take the parts, uh, student objectives, and we'll learn. Uh, we're going to put them working in teams of two how to build an obstacle avoidance robot using basic hand tools. Uh, 3D printed parts and electronic components. These components uh, were obtained on eBay. Uh, pretty inexpensive. Uh, this is a little Adreno. This is the nano version, so it's pretty small. Got a little USB connection here so that we can program it. Uh, we've got servos. There's two of these. These are uh, what we call continuous run servos. We use them as little motors to drive the, the robot wheels. Need some jumper wires and a small breadboard and also a battery battery container. I'm using a, a battery container here that that will contain four AA batteries. Gives you about, what, six volts, 1.5 uh, each. And, uh, two of them is three, 4.5, and then six, so six volts. Uh, we're going to use uh, the one of the robot chassis that we created in SolidWorks and printed. Uh, the servos and the wiring breadboard, the nano, the Adreno, the battery holder, and the ultrasonic sensor, which is right here on the front of the robot. Tools needed: uh, Phillips screwdriver, uh, so we can fasten the uh, can, uh, fasteners here for the ro uh, for the servos. Uh, needle nose pliers or long nose pliers, and maybe a small file for maybe cleaning up any of the edges or the holes uh, where maybe some debris was left over uh, during the uh, 3D printing. Uh, procedure we're going to start with the chassis and we designed this in SolidWorks and we're going to insert the two servos in either side and we're going to just use two screws instead of four even though we have four holes here for the fasteners uh, I'm just going to use a couple these these secure it pretty well they're not going to come out of there so use uh, these little screws are four uh, by 40s uh, they're only 3 8 inch and then we use a little 4 by 40 nut on the back of it they work pretty good, but any small fastener uh, for the servos would work just fine. Uh, again, the chassis here is three millimeters, and on the uh, servos here, you got about another two, and that gives you about five millimeters, and the three eighths seems to work pretty well with that. So go ahead and put the servos in. Uh, next, we're going to attach the wheels. We're going to install the wheels using a uh, small uh, two by three eighths inch screws. They're pretty small screws. You'll find some of these in the package uh, with the servos and the horns uh, so there's usually enough screws in there for attaching the horns if not these screws are pretty easily obtained at uh, any hardware store we're going to attach these uh, servo horns on the back side of the wheels try to get those holes lined up with that center hole and then make sure uh, this part of the servo horn is, is coming up so that we can attach that to the servo uh, then attach the wheels to the servo and secure. There's another little screw for the servo horn that goes through the horn and then into this uh, little uh, shaft coming out of the servo. And this spl splines on, so it's a pretty tight fit. And then you can secure it with a little screw right through the center of the wheel. Next is we're going to uh, secure that little uh, ball support on the back uh, of the chassis. We have those two holes on the back of the chassis. We're going to be using these little uh, fasteners which we printed out. We'll run those through that uh, small support. We'll use the longer bolt uh, to attach that ball at the bottom of the support. And this gives us uh, some clearance for these back edges of the chassis and this works pretty good. Uh, next we're going to install the battery on top of the chassis. Now I'm going to use uh, some small velcro strips to attach that battery so in case I need to pull it loose uh, otherwise, we've used uh, double-sided uh, foam or double-sided tape uh, to secure that on the back. That works, too. The, the Velcro makes it just a little bit easier to remove it. Uh, the on and off switch, if you get the battery uh, with the on and off switch, usually put that in the back so it's not interfering up in the front here uh, with the breadboard or the ultrasonic sensor so we have room here to get to it. Also, the... Uh, Positive and negative uh, wires coming out of the back of that battery holder also in the back that makes it a little bit easier for wiring So go ahead and attach the battery uh, Next we're going to attach the breadboard now these small breadboards do come with some double 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 sided uh, Foam tape already attached to them. So all you need to do is peel loose uh, That covering for one of the sticky sides and then you can just put it here on the top of the battery And that seems to work pretty good 
Uh, next, we're going to go ahead and attach our little ultrasonic sensor. Now, this is the uh, uh, little cheaper one that can be found uh, on eBay. It's got a little four connectors to it. Uh, it's an HC SRO4. So go ahead and, and put that in the first row of the breadboard, kind of in the middle. And then attach the, the Nano, the Adreno, on the back. And I, used, I left a, a row here free. So you'll notice the back pins don't actually connect to the breadboard, just that front row. Now the back pins, I'm going to be bending up uh, the 5 volt and connecting that with a female jumper. And then I'm going to be bending back the uh, ground and attaching that with another female jumper. And then running them up here to the VCC, uh, which is for the 5 volts to power this. And then there's a ground connection too. So we'll be running those up to the jumpers. When this is attached to the breadboard, these five uh, holes here are all connected by a bar. So those are all connected to each other. And there's just one row each of five. Uh, back here, these rows are all connected to these jumpers that are connected so that we can just put our inputs uh, back here. These are our digital pins. So we'll be running uh, the trigger and the echo uh, from our little sensor to these pins. And then also uh, for our servos, we'll be running the servos to the other digital pins for the control signals. So that pretty much completes the robot. In our next lesson, we're going to be, uh, in lesson three, wiring it and coding it and testing it so that we can get it uh, through our obstacle uh, maze uh, and do some little obstacle avoidance programming. Uh, it's pretty easy C programming, and we'll kind of take you through it step by step. Well, again, thanks for watching. Uh, this, again, was lesson two. Lesson three coming up. Uh, again, it'll be the wiring and the coding. Thanks again for watching. See you next time.